Welcome to Tech Notice, my friends. Perhaps you've got a budget for your creative PC and you're planning to spend it and you're wondering which are some of the best parts that I can get for my workflow, whether it's GPUs, CPUs, RAM, there's million options out there, right? How do you know which one is the best one? Well, that's why you've got Tech Notice and the best bank for buck creator PC series, which means that in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly everything you need to know and build and buy to get yourself the best bang for buck creator PC, the absolute best performance for your money. Well, let's start. Looking for a cheap way to license your Windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out WhoKeys.com in the video description below. Now, if your budget is different than what you see in this video, there are different budgets available and links for those in the description below. These are smart links and they will always lead you to the latest video possible. Even if you're watching this video and perhaps there's a new video out there, if you click on those links, it will lead you to the new video. It will always lead you to the newest latest best bang for buck PC video, just so you know. And I highly recommend you stick till the end of the video where I'm gonna share some very important tips and other bits that you need to know when building this PC. But let's jump straight into the parts. So then we start with the motherboard and for that we have chosen the Gigabyte B660MDS3H AX DDR4. Now this motherboard gives you a lot of specs for your money really. It, it's got all the basics and a little bit more. We've got Wi-Fi, we've got DDR4, we've got a good LAN support, we've got good ports, Bluetooth connectivity, we've got even two M.2 slots on the motherboard, which isn't a lot, but still you've got some upgradability and all the basics you need. And for $99, really it's hard to beat. Now the B760 is a lot more expensive and if you want to save even more you can take the wi-fi off but i think this is one of the best low-end motherboards you can get for the cpu we're going with the intel 12 600k which is a 10 core cpu and is just an unbelievable performer still one of my favorite cpus just because of the price and performance you can get plus the igpu support for video editors with intel quick sync is absolutely insane as a creator this is going to give you a lot of performance moving on to the cooler because this cpu isn't actually actually that hot and it doesn't need that much of a cooler but there's no cooler included in the box and we're gonna go with thermal right assassin x120 refined sc which sets us back only by 18 dollars slightly less and is an unbelievable reformer and does a really good job and is very quiet and reliable for this it's an unbelievable cooler now for ram we're gonna go with 16 gigabytes which is the absolute minimum i'd highly recommend to upgrade that if possible and this is by silicon power value gaming dd DDR4, two 18 gigabyte sticks, 3200 mega transfers. DDR4 is very, very cheap. So if you can upgrade that to a little bit of a higher capacity as a creator, because 16 gigabytes is kind of still on the border, but you can get your essentials done with this. For SSD, we're using something from Solitime, and this is called the P41 Plus, which is an absolutely amazing SSD for its price. It's Gen 4, you're gonna get quite solid speeds there, plus it's running some clever magic with their Synergy software where you get really fast random read and write speeds, so when your drive starts to fill up, it's actually outperforming some of the other competitors at the same price point. I'm a big fan of this. When I tested this, have a look at the review on my channel it's really really good and for 500 gigabytes for $28 it's unbelievable deal it's really one of the dark horse SSDs in the competition now moving on to the GPU side and this is where you know this kind of gets a little bit complicated but I think if you're not doing 3d at this price point then I highly recommend the Intel Arc A750, which I can see you can pick up for just over $200. And this is gonna be a great, great performer for your money. There's even more features that you can take uh, advantage of because of the iGPU and then media engines on the GPU. It, it's just gonna perform really, really well. And I think for that price point is the overall best performer. Now, if you do do 3D, I'd recommend probably sticking with Nvidia because they have a little bit of better support there but then you're still gonna be kind of linked with, um, am I gonna go with 3050 or 4060? 4060 has a little bit of an issues with the you know, memory bus and actually performs worse. So I think the A750 
150 is overall the best you can get. For power supply, we're using the Thermaltake Smart 700 watt power supply. 700 watts, I know it's not modular, but we're gonna try to save as much as possible at this price point to give you the best performance and the power supply doesn't necessarily give you performance, but we just need to juice and this provides enough juice for all of your parts in the system as well as some of the upgrades you might want to do in the future. And lastly, for PC case, I've gone with the Zalman T7 which uh, looks quite nice and I'm a big fan of just minimal cases and this is one of these cases that just looks nice. I don't really like those big gamery blingy and a lot of shapes and things going on. This is probably the best PC case that I can see for that price point. I'd love to know from you if you found a better one for that price point but this is pretty good. Plus it's got two pre-installed 120 millimeter fans which helps with the airflow for your CPU and GPU keeps the components cool. I think it's a fantastic case, especially for that, this price. Now, overall, I can see this is adding up to just over $700, $705.79. And this is an amazing PC you can get for $700. This is absolutely smoking even some of the Apple products for $700. You're not going to get anything better. And you've got a ton of upgrade options. Upgrade when you get a little bit of extra cash, it's going to be unbelievable. But now, if your budget allows you to stretch to $1,300, then these are some of the options that I would recommend you to get. When it comes to upgrades, pretty much everything is mix and matchable. So you can decide if you like a little bit more GPU, CPU, RAM, SSD, you know, all the other parts. I'll explain what the upgrade will give you as well. The only very important thing I'd want to underline is if you go with the motherboard upgrade, you also have to upgrade the RAM because the upgrade is DDR5 because DDR5 and 4, they aren't compatible. If you want to upgrade the RAM, you probably upgrade to DDR4 from the previous motherboard, or when you upgrade the motherboard, upgrade the RAM as well, which the upgrade kind of come together with RAM and motherboard on this one. For motherboard upgrade, we're gonna go with Gigabyte Z790 Gaming X AX. And this is quite a big of an upgrade. And the reason I kind of left everything out from the middle and didn't give you a DDR4 in there because DDR4 is kind of the end of the platform. And I think if you're investing about $1,300, you really want to go for like the higher end. In fact, if you just want to spend about $1,000, you can still do the motherboard and RAM upgrade. And that's going to give you a little bit more like future support and compatibility, what you can upgrade later in some of the, you know, parts. But DDR4 is getting now more affordable, which I think this is absolutely amazing motherboard because this is one of the cheapest DDR5 motherboards that offers you all of these features there. We're going to get a lot more M.2 SSD support Plus, it's got a heatsink there. There's four M.2 SSDs. They're all Gen 4 compatible. We've got front panel type C, which we didn't have before. We're going to get much better I.O. support plus Wi-Fi 6E and good LAN and USB-C in the back port. That's also 20 gigabits per second supported. I think this motherboard offers a lot for your money and it really can't beat for this price. And if you'd like to upgrade your CPU, this is compatible with the previous motherboard as well. This is the 13600K, the next generation. Now this has 14 cores and this is another one of those really, really good CPUs that I know this is an i5, but the performance you could get from this is absolutely unbelievable and keeps up with all of the previous generation i9s and i7s and which is absolutely amazing. So this is actually kind of on par or slightly better than the 12700K which can be a little bit more expensive, but the 13600K also has better RAM compatibility, so you can run faster RAM, and which gives you a little bit more performance as well. That's why we didn't go with the 12700K. And I think this is absolutely unbelievable. And this is a fantastic CPU. I highly recommend upgrading this if your budget allows. Moving on to the cooling now. And the cooler needs to be upgraded because the CPU is a little bit more demanding now. And we're going to upgrade this to Thermalright Peerless Assassin 120SE, which is the best bang for buck air cooler. You're really not going to get better cooling for $34. $90. It's unbelievable. We've tested this on the channel. It performed really, really well, and it's going to keep your 13600K cool very, very well because the 13600K is actually a little bit more power hungry than the 12600K. So you kind of 
really needs that cooler. Moving on to the SSD upgrade, we're going to upgrade the capacity of the P41 Plus from solid time to one terabytes. And as you can see, we're actually paying less money per terabyte. If you remember the price for the 500 gigabytes, so this terabyte is actually more affordable per gigabyte in terms of storage, but another fantastic drive. But I think for an OS drive now, you've got enough room for your programs and perhaps run some of the projects and simpler photos and things as well on that OS drive. And we're also gonna be adding a secondary drive, which is the Solidime P44 Pro. Now you can mix and match these, which one is gonna be the OS drive and which one is gonna be the actual asset or project drive. But this is an upgrade from the P41 Plus to P44 Pro. And this is actually better than the Samsung 990 Pro. Have a look at some more benchmarks on the channel when we're testing some of these SSDs. It's unbelievable performance. One of the dark horse there, very good random read and write speeds, which you would like for your OS, as well as project drives reading really fast and up to seven gigabytes per second read and write speeds. It's insane speeds. Now for RAM upgrade, we're actually gonna just skip the 32 gigabyte upgrade because the prices are better now than, you know, a year ago or six months ago. So now for 64 gigabytes of DD five 5600 mega transfers per second you're gonna pay only around 160 dollars uh, check out the latest pricing in the description below because it might be even cheaper and there's some alternatives there as well but this will like sort you out for a long time this is the sweet spot for create pcs 64 gigabytes you're not going to be bottleneck any of the ram capacity whether you're working with videos photos this is a really, really good upgrade with the motherboard and highly recommended, especially for this price point. The reason we're not going with faster than 5600 mega transfers per second RAM is because the integrated memory controller of actual CPU is 5600 mega transfers per second. If you go above that, technically you are going out of the warranty specs or Intel specs and you might not get those speeds or you might get crashes. And as a creator, stability is very, very important. And I would rather have the stability than the absolute best RAM speeds to get only a little bit more performance, but we're gonna pay the penalty in stability. That's why it's 5,600 mega transfers per second. Now for GPU upgrade, this made me really think for a very long time because generally we're looking for the best GPU for most people. And the RTX 3060, even though being from previous generation, is actually a very good pick. Now, the upgrade doesn't cost that much, roughly around $70 to get to this one. But what you'll get for it is the 12 gigabytes of VRAM now, not just eight, so a little bit more, plus very good 3D support, which is much better than the Arc can give you. So this works great for photo, video, 3D, it's overall really, really good performer. And if you want to get it cheaper somewhere secondhand, you can risk it and get it there. But for new, this is a very, very good price. And in fact, this is better than the newer generation RTX 4060 because you've got more VRAM as well as a better memory bus. So it will perform better in most of the applications. And I wouldn't recommend the 4060 and 4060 Ti from the new generation. And that's why we're going with this one. Now, there are the AMD cards as well and perhaps you can get a little bit of a better you know performance in certain applications but this overall stability again for creators is a little bit better with nvidia cards and that's why we're going with this one if you want to know which is the best gpu for your system or program check out the best gpu for creators for your software on the channel. Now, for $1,300, we also wanna upgrade the power supply because previously we only had 80 plus white power efficiency. Now we have Seasonic Focus Plus 650 watt, so slightly less wattage, but actually that doesn't matter because we still have plenty of juice to power all of this. This is 80 plus gold, so much more power efficient, so you're gonna save in your energy bills, as well as a lot longer warranty. So now we're gonna get really good quality power supply that's gonna last for a long time, over 10 year warranty. So you have peace of mind that your PC gets good juice because we're spending a little bit more. I think it's worth investing to a good power supply that will power all of the components with, you know, good juice. And for a case, I would upgrade the case to Fractal Design Focus 2. Now, this is a really nice minimal case as well, even more minimal, I would say. This is a little bit more higher quality. You get two 140 millimeter fans included with the case. Tempered glass panel now, very good airflow, very good support for up upgrades, cable management, and very minimal as well. There's a few options available there. Solid panel, tempered glass, 
with RGB if you want to play it, pay a little bit more or white option there as well with RGB or white with just black fans. But I think for the extra 30, 35, 40 dollars to, to spend on this case, it's definitely worth it because you really feel the quality is better and it does look better as well. Plus you get better fans included with the case. And now the upgrade total what I have seen over here is around $13,012, which costs extra $607 in upgrades, but you're really going to get a lot more performance as well as better quality parts and more storage to actually work and you're less bottlenecked in some of the applications that you might use. Now bear in mind you don't have to do all of the upgrades like I said and all the links are in the description below. You can find their upgrades and downgrades as well as some of the alter alternatives there if some part isn't in stock or is a little bit more expensive. I'm going to give you one or two more alternatives so you can go with that one as well if it's cheaper. If your budget is more than $1300 and perhaps you can stretch it to $1500 then check out the next video or the next part that's coming out. You can actually check it out straight away in the links in the description below. If it's already out, then it'll lead you to that video if it's not even the next video. But now some very important mentions that I need to say before you start building your PC or before you start purchasing. Firstly, highly recommend checking out the links for, that I have provided if you're unsure some of the compatibility or sometimes the naming can be slightly different but actually you get completely different motherboard or DDR4 and DDR5. If you're not actually very knowledgeable, you can accidentally buy the wrong parts. So I'm going to make sure that the parts in the description below are linked to the right products and all of these are compatible with each other. And if you don't know which part to upgrade or downgrade in your workflow, whether you're a photographer, videographer, 3D, if you're working on any of these areas or perhaps a mix of something, then I highly recommend checking out my video where I'm going more in depth about the different workflows as a photographer, videographer or 3D, whether you're editing in all of these parts as well, which are more important for you to upgrade, what are some of the bottlenecks and how can you find out which product is better and is worth upgrading. So I'll link that video in the description below. You'll also find a build guide in the description below. If you've never built a PC, just follow that video and you can easily build it. Buy the parts linked ab above and then follow the guide and you can build any PC. Yeah, the parts might be slightly different, but the parts go exactly into the same socket. They might look different, but there's exactly the same socket or exactly the same header or exactly the same thing. So you'll know, you can figure it out. Absolutely no problem. And if you don't know how to install Windows or get the drivers or software, all of this configured, there's going to be another video there that I've done a full tutorial on the channel. You can just follow it and get it all built for you. Underneath that video, you can find a stress test to make sure that all your PC parts and hardware work properly and you're not going to be bottlenecked in anywhere. It's linked in there as well, as well as the fan configuration, because configuring the fan speed can also give you better performance and quieter performance. So if you don't know how to do that, definitely worth checking out that video as well. So all the videos, everything you need is all linked down there. So go check it out in the description below. Basically just live in there now because all the answers you might have are in there. If you have any other questions or suggestions or comments, I'll meet you in the comment section below. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.